database sharding is a very common topic amongst those concerned with database management. Let's take a brief look at database sharding and how DGRAPH handles sharding. As your application grows, you need to start thinking about scaling your database to handle the increased amount of traffic and data. You have several options to consider, and one such option is sharding your database. Sharding splits up a large database into several smaller databases. Each of those components is called a shard. Sharding is considered an efficient way to scale horizontally. And this means that you're going to buy more machines or storage units and then divide your data amongst them. Each machine serves as a shard acting as an entirely independent database. This approach falls under a distributed architecture where the total load is spread out across multiple services. Due to the smaller size of each shard, hardware requirements also tend to be smaller. You can scale out further and add more shards as your system grows. So even though the initial cost of setting up a sharded architecture is a little bit high, in the long run, as your application grows, it offers a more efficient way of scaling. Now let's begin to look at sharding in terms of DGRAPH. Now if you're unfamiliar with DGRAPH, DGRAPH is a graph database, and as part of that, it represents and stores data using graph structures. A very brief graph primer. The nodes of a graph have properties associated with them representing various data objects, which we will see here. Now an edge also contains data by indicating the relationship between the two nodes. And that's what we now see. We now see that each of these nodes has an edge between which forces the relationship. In DGRAPH, both node properties and edges are referred to as predicates. Before talking about sharding in DGRAPH, let's just try to understand exactly what a DGRAPH cluster looks like. A DGRAPH cluster mainly consists of two nodes, DGRAPH0 and DGRAPH alpha. Now you'll see that 0 is actually in charge of controlling the cluster. It'll perform related tasks, such as assigning groups of data to each running alphas, and will also manage the balance of data between groups, and so on and so forth. The alpha is where the actual data is. So DGRAPH alpha hosts the data in the form of predicates. A closer look at how DGRAPH alpha works. Well, DGRAPH shards the data by predicates. So one or more predicates are assigned to a group. Each alpha node serves as a single group. If you need more alpha nodes in the cluster, zero would further shard that data and assign them to new nodes. DGRAPH0, on the other hand, periodically monitors and balances the data among the groups. This is done by watching the disk usage of each group, and if there's an imbalance, zero would attempt to move the predicates to a group having lower disk usage. This way, you don't have to worry about inconsistent data across shards. You can scale and still maintain the flexibility needed to safely store and serve large data.